What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today. Like my man Steve Harvey done say, it's Rick Glassman. Rick Glassman of the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Tyso, uh, check him out. Check out his 200th episode with Papa and Teddy and maybe a special guest. Do more. Say sincere stuff about me, too. That's He's a really real. sweet guy. No, but be, say, like, look at the camera. Really look at the camera and, like, do, like, a minute of real compliments and what makes me special. This guy is one of those Jews whose back always hurts and is very funny. And I really love him. He's tall and he's good at basketball. And he's one of my favorite people to play with on Earth. On uh, what? In, in, on Earth. Well, like when we're standing on Brett Ernst? And on, on Brett Ernst. <laughs> he's my favorite guy to play. He's you my know what? favorite I'm guy to play intro. with. Why don't you do it again? I, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm, I'm, use it. I'm really, really <laughs> sorry. Keep it in the place. I, I don't know. Just uh, do it enough, your own. This is enough rambling. Uh, uh, let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. He's still got it. Rick Glassman. Classy, glassy, baby. He's a little stony baloney on the show, and and today Whiskey Pete, my boy Whiskey Pete, Chris Hart sent me um, the Parker's Heritage Collection, a little bit of double barrel blend, some of the best jazz on planet. A little Earth. bit of a double barrel blend, some of the best jazz. This Let's is get uh, into it. this is Heaven Hill's finest. This is very expensive. It's very nice, and thank you so much, Chris Hart, Whiskey Pete. Ooh, cheers, cheers for looking me in the eyes. All right, let's have a little sip. Now I'm not much of a drinker. Is was this microwaved? Yeah. Because it's warm. Well, you put it you put it on a stovetop if you don't have a microwave. Did you? But, you know, in Biden's new world, we're not going to have gas stoves anymore. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, arms up. Yeah, I was going to do that. But then you Arms up. Uh, classy, Rick. classy. Rick Glassman and I have known each other for a very long time. It's so good to see you again. It's been a very long time. These shoes are sexy, buddy. Lift them up so the cam can see. <whistles> and the pink socks. And they're brand new. I see by the bottom. You do of that, them. that kind of music. You know when Bugs Bunny is like he has an a nemesis, mm. but then he realizes to get out of it, he leaves the room and he puts on female brevet clothes. Yeah. But they're gonna know it's really him. So instead, he just puts a leg out, and he like shows the leg, and the person's jaw drops. Uh, but do you remember that kind of music? Oh yeah. You know how it goes. Mm -hmm. You do it. <laughs> do the music. <laughs> That is the music. That is yeah, the music. It's, tiny, yeah, yeah. it's just like <laughs> from the good old days. From the good old days. Why? You know, did they really know? Did they really know that it was Bugs Bunny when he put on a dress? Because yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and you know what? I think is even more important than that. And I really don't want to split the audience here. Here it goes. Let him wear whatever he wants to wear. Boo! No cartoon of mine <laughs> is gonna <laughs> wear a dress. What were you about to say? No cartoon what? I don't even know. Oh, because you no have a hard F. Yeah, hard F. No cartoon friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, good, good. <laughs> they got. Uh, they, where's the world coming to? They got cartoons in drag. The, the the ability to have voices the way that some of our friends do, you included. You, I always think yeah. you and Amir tops. My favorite. Aristotle also very good. Aristotle is unbelievably but good. But to be able to tap into that voice, I watch it. It's it's probably how I feel people who don't play like a sport watch other people play. And they're like, I want to play. I get it. I Why get the sport. But I, I love watching it. I just can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. What sport do you see that you wish you, you could play but I could you do, can't? I, honestly, I, and I'm wrong. I believe I'm wrong. I really think and I could do anything in the high world. High lie. is really tough. I don't know what high lie is. It's a big hook arm. You got a big hook ooh, arm. Ooh. Oh. Just, just say Jewish. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> you got a big Jewish arm. Yeah. <laughs> And you and they literally hurl a ball like 150 miles an hour. No, I don't think I can hour. do that. No, nah, that's tough. No, but like I've always felt like I'd be a great football player, wrestler. I'm yes, a great bowler yes, already. Yes, I'm and, a phenomenal bowler. Um, is this a good time to plug my my uh, basketball show? I am phenomenal. Please, please, I'll do it. Because I think no. Rick Glassman has this great photo of him playing against LeBron James in high school, which is what? just an insane thing. Now, yeah. I heard he's really good. Rick's really good. Somebody told me that like he was, I think, playing a pickup game with someone. 
like somebody in entertainment and they're like, hey man, like you gotta dial it back a little bit. Hit that, Baldy. Catch the fucking ball, dude. You're not aware of how other people perceive you. What are you talking about? Good take, you idiot. Ah. Whoops! Are you not entertained? Got it! Go ahead, go ahead. Nuts. I am phenomenal. I got big balls. I got a cool guy haircut. I got and we're back. Um, you are phenomenal. You know, I almost bowled a perfect game once. So did I. I bet you I got closer. Yeah, maybe because I bowled nine strikes in a row, and in the tenth frame, I bowled a seven. Um, and then a two. So I couldn't close it. <laughs> the burp after. I couldn't close it. Nine in a row, and it was my birthday weekend. 277. 279. Yeah. 279, I think it was, yeah. It's not bad. Pretty good. Yeah. What'd you have? Uh, 10 strikes in a row? 11? 10. 10. Ten. Well, it was two away. Eight, and then I picked it up. So 288. Two, eight, yeah, 88. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, the whole, the, the whole bowling, at five, at five strikes, the whole bowling alley came over. This is exactly what happened to me. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Was here in the valley. I'm bowling from, I'm, I hit a strike at nothing. Hit another strike. Show me, show me, show me. Could you show me like you you hit the strike and then could you actually give me a, a moment after each strike that you hit? Where okay, I can first see strike. Hey, hey. Okay, second strike. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Now third. What is going on? <laughs> okay. Go on. Fourth strike. Okay. Yeah, might be in punked. Where is this? Right. Where's Nick Cannon? Yeah. Uh, fifth strike. <laughs> Jiminy Crickets. Yeah. Heavens to Betsy. Sixth strike. I'm seven. concerned. We're on seven now, I think. Are we on seven? You I think. Whatever. Six and seven were probably the same emotion. Yeah. I was annoyed and nervous. Why were you annoyed? Because people did start to come over. And you're trying to keep, uh, just keep I don't want routine. them near, don't. You're yeah. never more superstitious than when, when you have, a, when you have a turkey and uh -huh. you're still going. Yeah. It's, it's like. That would be good merch. <laughs> <laughs> you're ever you're never too more, more you're never, never more, more superstitious nervous. than when you have a turkey and you're trying to get more. <laughs> it's a lot of words, but I think we can put it on one shirt. Oh, and then by eighth, hot. by the eighth one, I got so anxious. And then the ninth one was a uh uh what is it called? Uh uh, uh Bro a Brooklyn, not a Brooklyn. What's the strike when Brooklyn. it's on the other side of the, of the head pin? It's a Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah, when you're on the left well, assuming that you're if a right handed, I was on the left hand side of the, side of the head, pin. Yeah. head pin. And I hit that one and it shouldn't have the ten pin fell on accident. Like it was just tipped. So I got lucky. And then after that I knew no chance. When we got to the tenth frame, I locked up. Resin back? Were you doing this stuff? I got a couple of resin back. I, I flipped it on both sides of the hands. Because yeah. you, you grew up with the Chicago Cubs. Chicago Cubs, we yeah. With Billy Bombardi, who yeah. used to do that all the Billy time. Billy Bombardo with an O. Right. Billy Bombardo used to do that. One bad one leg was longer than the other one. They said he had a bad leg, but he didn't. It just because he came off the mound so much, it compressed his bone. His femur was shorter. You know, he's it's supposed, it's supposed to be, a, uh, what do you call him now? Billy what? Well, Billy Bombardo. Right, but now they're um, they're trying to have this movement where they're calling him uh, uh, Billy Bombardex. So in case, he, however. Oh, however he identifies. If he identifies as like a pitcher or a catcher. Uh, what are you? One, two, three. Rick pitcher. Glassman. You're a pitcher. I'm, uh, I'm a pitcher. My brother's a good pitcher. Is he? Yeah. Threw 90 miles an hour once. I mean, maybe more than once, but it was clocked at the Orange Jubilee in high school. Shout out to the Orange Jubilee. Shout out to the Orange Jubilee. Great lemonade. <laughs> we'll be right back. So we have our best friend over there. We said, you know, he says every time, but this time I mean it, he is back, baby. Now, this is a really expensive bottle of vodka, you know, whiskey. Rude. You know better. I'll test you. What's the name of the distillery that made that? Go. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fail like it out of 10 times with any test. <laughs> Even if I know it, by the fact of you saying I'll test you, I'm going, ah, you know. Freak out. What'd yeah. you get on your ACTs? Didn't even take them. SATs. I don't remember. Yeah, you do. I really don't. Rick, I don't really don't. As remember. smart as you are, I know you know. I really don't remember. What's that? What's that? I, I, the only college I only applied to one college, Kent State, because that's the college my brother went to. I just knew like I'll do well enough to go to this school and go to this place. I really didn't care about grades until my freshman year, first semester, I got an academic probation. Oh. Um, and then after that, I did I did do very well. I don't need to brag about my dean's list re record, but. 
Summa Cum Laude? Um, was that his name? <laughs> Lou Lot Loud X, yeah. <laughs> I you graduated know, with honors, did you? Yeah. I graduated with an uh, with a business achievement award, which is I'm sorry. I yes, I did. And business I'll tell, achievement award. I'll tell you about it. It's actually it a sounds funny like story. it's from a video game. They business made it up. achievement award. <laughs> yeah. Unlocked. It's like <laughs> if you post enough reels, you unlock business achievement award. <laughs> But you posted 19 crowdwork videos <laughs> in one day. This guy knows what I'm talking about. When uh, uh, after shows, when I when I take pictures with people, you know, line up and you know the people they come and you try to do it for like you have your moment with them, but also in a playful way, let them know. All right, we got to do it. Yeah. Um, I don't like uh, doing arms around each other. It's not an, a germ thing. I just I when don't... they put their arm around you. If they need to, depending yeah. on my mood, okay. Okay. I will never suggest it. I'm, I prefer not. But like, even with friends, like sometimes, all right, and then they, and then just the, it's just a weird pose. And so you just stand shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, I just go. I, I put my hands in my pocket, just like it's, it's just easy to just like I'm here. You do your thing. I get it. Um, yeah. But then sometimes I, when I'm doing that with people, when they go around you, they still put their arm around. So what I do now is I always have a water on me, mm -hmm. and while people are doing it, I. Go like this, like I'm posing something. Like that you're way selling they know. it. Uh, and I say, uh, I tell them, um, so I'm trying, like I'm trying to get a sponsor from Evian. So remember, if you tag me, tag Evian. So then oh. I do that. And then it becomes its own joke. So you don't have to think of stuff all the time, which also, I'm so excited. Thank you for meeting me. I look like my <laughs> But like, after like a little bit, you know, you get in the pocket, the people already know the joke because you go, and remember, if you tag me, and the, have the line, tag Evian is the whole line. Right. So then it becomes its own bit that I don't have Has to. Has Evian said anything about it? It's not always Evian. It's whoever the thing is. Well, you should stick to one. If you're well, gonna I'm going to wait until the first person to reach out. Who's but the I, lowest on a totem pole to reach out to? Are we allowed to say totem pole anymore? Can you say that? I, th I think you can. I think totem, I think totem is okay. Pole is bad? Uh, pole lock, I think you're not supposed to say. That one's bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 but i'm just i'm more considering like like when you're in, either uh, on the nor the highest or the lowest of the hemisphere and you want to lock the door i like you that. call it the pole lock pole lock that's what i meant <laughs> grab your key yeah and how many pole locks does it take to close up the earth that's a really good question it depends you know there's different colored doors have you ever played with the black locks the black pole locks yeah what's up with the black black the black, the black pole locks. locks the black pole locks <laughs> i'll tell you something <laughs> Uh, remember what, when we did the... for some reason the black pole locks never work I, I wouldn't say they don't work I think that I think that you know I think that they have a lot going against them we're having fun because, considering it's so cold yeah and the black locks are normally made out of iron and they freeze up more so I just think systemically there's a lot going against the black pole locks the weather <laughs> first base <laughs> Wait, no, man, I want to ask you something. No, I'll go. Give it to me. Have you ever noticed? <laughs> no. Stop it. Okay. Because I know you're very particular, because I know the way you, you rank things in your mind. One through ten? Give me the shittiest water to the best water bottle. Bottled water. I don't like to talk about other water. I know you do. <laughs> I really don't. Every, all the water companies are trying. I'll tell you what my favorite is, though. <laughs> I'll tell you what my favorite is. Go it's Mountain it. Valley. MV. Yeah. Good I day. would love a sponsorship from Mountain Valley. You, because it's bottles. It's, it's glass, glass bottles. Glass bottles. That's the ocean. Ah, That's going to end up in the ocean. Yeah. It's, and, and the ocean of my, of my microbiome, the plastic is also going to end up in. It is. Because yeah. you're going to eat plastic at some point. You know, the microplastics. What movie is that? Microplastics? Yeah, the microplastics. It was a comedy. It was a comedy where they were trying to, like, get, like, the microplastics. Wait. Wh wh and it was, some, it was, like, film or something. Do you remember? <laughs> Microfiche? <laughs> How many micros? Does it take to... To Unlock get to the black center. <laughs> I don't know. You don't. What's your okay? The so what's your, what's your least favorite water then? I know you have one. Doesn't matter. I can shout it out because you know what it is. Go for it. Dasani trash. Don't ever give me a Dasani. Don't ever look at me in the face with a bottle of Dasani and tell me that you're drinking water. Listen, if my parents ever gave me one of those, I would ask them to disown me because I do not like <laughs> a Dasani. That's not true. I was saying that because interesting. You know, said I really have to. Water. Shout out to the Glassmans, by the way. Some of the greatest people on earth. I'm going to see your parents. I might see. We're going to be in Ohio. Yeah, oh, you're going to be there, I, I maybe. Might, I, because it's, it's very close to where I grew up. But are you just going to be home that time? Come so, home. So I normally go home for my birthday, which is a month later, and I normally stay for four to six weeks. Yeah. So I thought I might come a couple weeks earlier. I'd love it. Yeah. You bring your mom and dad? Of course. You bring your, you, would you bring your brother? So my brother is about to be having a baby. 
Big deal. Um, Bring the baby. And my parents might be here at that time if that's when he's having the baby. I don't like that. Yeah. Bring your uncle. That could be the name of the show. Bring your uncle. Yeah. Why but, don't we promote it now? The Bring Your Uncle Show, live in Northfield, Ohio, June 26th. I think it, I, no, no, that can, that's, you're, you're way too late. But oh, Bring Your Uncle Show, bad I'm way friend. Way too late? You're way too late. I'm not buddy. way too late. You are. Okay. Bring Your Uncle Show uh, is going to be in uh, Northfield, Ohio, 24. Way too late? Two days later? Well, people showed up two days later, you'd, they'd be way, way okay. too late. Okay. If, you, if I said, Rick, you want to go to lunch? Yeah, when? Wednesday noon. Great. And, and you show showed up Friday. Friday. You exactly at noon. Way too late. Way too late. Hey, I'm wrong. <laughs> bring your uncle. By the way, if you are if you live in Ohio, please bring your uncle. If you do bring your uncle to the show, we will have a special surprise for you. You might be let on stage with your uncle. Who knows? You know what? Bring your uncle. They might, to make you guys more comfortable, and maybe you'd like to meet my uncle, here's an opportunity for you to meet Uncle Bob. <laughs> I'll, send you, I'll send you the assets. Send me all that stuff that mm -hmm. goes in there. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Let's man. get started. Here we go. In here, we pour whiskey. Oh, wow, you're promoting your show. I want, there's something I want to promote. Promote your show. Well, not my show. There's something I want to, I want to promote my uh, Tyso trading cards. Oh, yeah, check this out. I posted on Instagram. People freaked out about this. So People that are Tyso fans should know about this. Rick sp spoke about it before, and we've talked about it before on Bad Friends, but these are... Tyso trading cards. Yep, we do. Uh, shout out to uh, Scott Goblet. Hepburn, who's a Marvel who illustrator. He's fucking phenomenal. Scott Hepburn? Scott Hepburn. Um, Audrey Hepburn's son. I don't think so. Audrey Hepburn's son drew these cards. Can and, you believe uh, that? Uh, here, you know, I have um, the last two are for you, um, but here, these are in order of release. You don't have to, I don't want to spend too much time making a real commercial for him, but I definitely want you to at but least Rick show Rick and yours. Goblin is incredible. Goblin is in every, you'll notice Goblin Goblin's is every in every card. single one. There's Blake Griffin. Uh, as Colossus. With uh, Mark Maron as Iron Man. Yep. Irony Stag. Eric Griffin as Mr. Potato Head. Yep. And then we have the Vegas Dads collection. That's just dads. Dragon Ball Z. That's so All the hot. Dads. Cousin and Uncle Teddy. Bob. Mark. Uncle Bob. And, then and here then, they are. And then, of course, uh, Robert E. Lee. As Toad. As Toad. And, and myself. Santino as Sabretooth. Come Sab on, look at that. That's so cool. Those By the way, legit. that is so, so cool. Yeah, right? And the little gob in the background on the tree with me is having Come a good on. time. Aren't those cool? These are very, very rad. I'm a big collector, specifically in Magic the Gathering cards. I'm a big card guy. I yeah. found an amazing process of getting these made. They're like legit. I sometimes, I, like I look at them sometimes. Like I'm just holding them and like, How, um, they're very cool. Can you tell me what this kind of thing costs? For you to buy one? Yeah. They're $17 a piece. $17 doesn't even seem like that much money. That's Tyso Cards. T-Y-S-O Cards.com. Tyso Cards.com, $17. And what we do still you... got some limited edition of some of those cards. but S Some. Some, some, some. some they might be gone. By the time anymore. you click, they might be all gone. But come on, dude. These are cool. I haven't seen you in how many months? Say it at the same time. At which Count of what? You tell me the count. One, two, three. Three. Probably three. Three or four months? It's been a long time. What's I gonna saw you right before you left. I went to your house. Yeah, you did. You came over before what I was left. That? I don't really remember much before I left. Who cares? Who cares? Time was different. Who cares then? A great flight, by the way. Watched you people on the flight. Oh. Uh -huh. I know. Yeah. Uh-huh. The BPLs? A lot of black pole locks on there. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have to to make sure that you know, no one opens emergency exits. That's right. Uh, it was good. It was fun. And then I watched 19 other documentaries I got into. My dad loves ancient aliens. He's obsessed. Like the sh a show or the thing? No, he has. He knows a few in the neighborhood. Holy shit. Yeah, well, they come around, those guys. Yeah. He loves the show so much. He can't stop talking about the pyramids. He's obsessed. All The whole vacation, pyramids. He'd be in the middle, we'd be in the middle of a meal. He'd be like, you know they're all placed over a spring. Huh. And we're like, what? He's like, every one of them is placed over some sort of spring. Okay. Well, just saying. You know, that reminds me of the city of Venice, how it's built on tree logs. Did you know that? Oak That's or pine? That's why it's sinking. Sinking. I'm not sure that, really, like in the water, there, there's like all these trees. Think of them like, you know, you know what I'm doing. Bob Ross? He painting trees? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm hammering the trees down. Oh, this is how they hammer down. Yeah. And, and then it's built on these trees. Tree and like platform. underneath. Yeah. So everything, the, all the, the foundation, it's all above water, but the trees are in the water. So if like you lift the city, you'll just see a whole bunch of like dots of trees. If bird's eye view, can I say dots? Yeah, careful. Bird's eye view. It's a religious thing, I guess. Have you been to Venice? Ah, uh, what? Have you been to Venice? Mm -mm. I went to Venice, Italy, California. But have you been to Venice, Italy? I went to Venice, Italy. 
I went to Venice, Italy, and and we were so broke. All we had, we smoked cigarettes and ate oranges to get us until our next meal. Will you say that same exact sentence word for word, but treat it like the what you said after so broke is a punchline? The word so broke is the punchline or the punchline? Uh, after, I was so broke that, uh... Yeah. Let me tell you something about going to Venice, Italy. I was so broke that I had to smoke cigarettes and eat oranges <laughs> for my last meal. <laughs> that kill? I want, I, I'm not ironically laughing. That was really <laughs> funny. I went to Venice, Italy. I was so broke. How? I, I, oh, sorry. No, no, I don't need I this. went to Venice, Italy, and I was so broke. How broke were you? I had to stay in a hostel, but it was a little hostel. <laughs> <laughs> Rick. 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 That's how it goes, baby. Dude, I got to tell you something. Good to be back. Good to be I, here. Good to be back. I'm. Uh, Can I tell people what you texted me the other day? As long as you tell them uh, exactly like I said it. You said, is this a bad number of tickets to sell on this ti- on this night? You're worried about a ticket sales for a show? Uh, I didn't know you were t- t- typing. But... And then I said, no, it's great. There you have it. What's wrong with that? But when is that show? I did it. You sold it? Did you sell it out? No, I, those were the numbers. It was over. No, I sold, it was like 300 some tickets. That's great. Um, yeah, I just wasn't sure because, you know, I know on a Thursday, tickets don't sell as well, but I'm new to this. I, I'm new to, I, I haven't uh, headlined since pre-COVID. Yeah. I haven't headlined since pre-COVID. <laughs> so, uh, and that was before my podcast, so I don't know what tickets would be like, and it's a big venue, so like, I, I wasn't sure, like, is it bad if I don't sell it out? And by bad, I, I, I just mean like, I'm using this as a test to see, sh- should, like, should I go on the road? Like, would I sell enough tickets on the road? So that's what I was like looking for. And the answer for. is yeah. Well, there you have it. You could go to my website. I don't have any, I don't have like a thing where I show shows or not, but like, it's okay. I also don't have all the thumbnails updated on the podcast. Don't but, worry about it. You know, you could, you could just check that out. Seems There's, like uh, you, got, you got to hire somebody at some point. <laughs> you got too many people already working for you at Tyso. Tyso Productions, how many employees? Three? Yeah. Good, good. That's good. Yeah. You're humming along, kiddo. Dude, the only thing I'm missing right now is a suite. Say it. It's a suite, like a hotel suite, where like when I go on the road, I would I do it in a suite. Oh, you always like to have suites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Preferred hotel? Um, New York. I'm into right now. I'm a little bougie, but I'll tell you the truth. The Peninsula. <laughs> Love that one. Wow. Yeah. We're talking 1100 a night. Um. We're talking eleven hundred a night. I, I, We're talking twelve you seventy five. You're, you're looking you're on a look- on a Friday or Saturday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, but you get a suite because you could film the pod there. That's smart. And then, I mean, you write it off. You also get like the idea of being like, oh, well, it's paying for itself. Mm. You know. Hmm. It's like we're making money. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll stay. I'll stay in almost any brand as long as. Let me guess. Go ahead. Give me five hints. It's about the room. Okay. It's comfort. It's a comfort thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a uh, certain kind of That's view. That's a lot of hints. Certain kind of view, certain kind of bed. View, not as much. You need to be facing south and you need to have a small bed. Bed's got to be facing west, always facing west. Because of? Mecca. Because of, mm-hmm. And I need mm-hmm. the shower to have a, I need to have a walk-in shower. Yeah. No Cannot bed. do a lip I up I love shower. a bath. I want a bath, but only if it's a freestanding bath. Have to be separate. They must be separate. Do you use a bath in a nice hotel? 100%. Do you get in the bath after your shower, or do you shower after the bath? Or I, you shower, just... I shower after the bath. So your bath is your playtime. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's when I have a little bit of fun. Light a couple of candles, listen to some tunes. Bubbles? I like bubbles. I'm saying, can I get some bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get you some. I remember, I'm a little off track here, but can I tell you a story about bubbles? Come on. Yes? That's come on is yes. Oh, so I've been in Australia too long. So one of the first shows I ever d- uh, did in Los Angeles was a show that I produced. I was taking improv. I was like paying for these improv classes in the Valley. And every week. Who taught him? Uh, I don't remember his name. Damn. Go ahead. But uh, it was every week. There was, it was, there was a class one day. And then at night, there was a show. So you had a show every weekend. Oh, wow. And I loved it. And right next to it, there was some venue. And I'm like, uh. Could I do a stand-up show here? Dude, 
excuse me, I'm telling this story and there's a bubbles part that I wanted to get to and I'm realizing how much backstory there is to it. I just want to fucking knock. I don't want to, I don't want to have to set it all up. Can I try telling you the story without giving you enough details? Because I over communicate. I bet you. But I like the story. It's got great details. You see the room. You want to do stand up. What happens? Yeah, I just feel like I could be. I can make this more, much more efficient. Because <laughs> I got bored. Okay. I'm like, so there I am, and I'm talking about we had shows every week. That's not the fucking point. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? You know. Get to bubbles. I remember this is who I met, and I've always looked at him as like, whoa, because he saved the day for me, Maximini. I haven't seen him in a while. Do you remember Maximini? Of course I do. Yeah, I know him Is more. Is he around a lot? I feel like he tried. I'm not around time. a lot, so I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while. But I remember he'd like, oh, I had this guy, and then I couldn't, and then last minute, Maximini, headliner, comes in and saves the day. Wow. And I was like, because I was like, I can't headline this. So I had somebody come in to do it. So I'm doing the sound check, and I'm looking with, I don't even know what to ask, but there's this thing here. And, I, and I'm like, what's this? He goes, it's a bubble machine. And I'm like, Whoa, could you like do bubbles? Like, if I say like bubble me, could you like do bubbles <laughs> if I write jokes? And they're like, no, we don't. I just, I don't, you know, like, I don't remember they said, but just no, you know. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. And like, so, yeah, this sounds good. <laughs> you know, like, what's the sound check? Hello? All right, I heard it. I still don't know what a sound check is. <laughs> all right, I'm just seeing if this sounds good. I like to have somebody else do it for me. Yeah. But you know, I'm happy to do it. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm happy to do the work. So I'm on stage, bobbing. <laughs> okay, I'm so nervous. <laughs> and I'm working, I'm waiting tables, and all the people, like 30% of the audience there are people that worked at my restaurant that, like, we want to come see you. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. Oh. So I'm just bombing. I do remember one of the guys that worked for me, I said something, I don't remember what it was, and I met the guy right before. He's a friend of the guy that worked for me. I said something, and the guy goes like, <laughs> I don't remember this fucking, it wasn't, he, it wasn't like a, a heckle where like he wasn't just disruptive where it's like yeah my birthday's in that time too it was like he did he was i just remember he, i think he was being mean he was just drunk probably I, I, not my fucking fault <laughs> you know <laughs> handle your business you know you're here like my my guy that i work with he's like oh i'll come and support you don't bother <laughs> he brought this guy who goes like i'm like i'm probably just like i remember a joke i used to have when i first started was i would do this is my impression of a guy, this is my impression of a guy when he hears that I say I've never had an Oreo before. And then like I turn around and I'm dramatic and I'm wasting time and I go, you've never had an Oreo before? And, that's, <laughs> and, then, and then the guy's like, nobody fucking cares or you know, something like that. And I just like, I got so nervous because I didn't know how to respond or if I even should. Right. And I have all these other people here and I'm bombing and then I just go, Bubble me, <laughs> and and I don't know why I thought bubbles would come out, or that people knew what bubble me meant. They don't even know there's a bubble <laughs> machine, so I'm just bobbing, and I go bubble me, and then that made me more nervous because it didn't work. <laughs> but then who saved the fucking day? Maximini. God bless Maximini. Free plug to Maximini. That's Maximini. M a x a m a n i dot com. I don't know if you Google it. Yeah, you'll find. I don't it. think there's too many Maximinis. I also don't think there's too many Heimlichs, which offers me to beg the question: just call it the Heimlich instead of maneuver. Nobody's gonna think that. Well, which Heimlich? The the Heim Heimlich the song. Yeah, there is no Heimlich song. The boat. The not not one. You don't know about the Heimlich boat that came over here, Andrew. I love your improv. Not a Heimlich boat. From Germany, the Heimlich. That's where it comes from. Do you not know this? I'm looking it up. And if you're wrong, you have to suck my black <laughs> Polak dick. <laughs> In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, guys, I've talked about Squarespace on this show all the time because I used it to create my very first uh, tour website. And I still use Squarespace because I love it so very much. Um, if you're looking to build a site, promote a brand, uh, promote yourself, sell something, you're a trainer, you're an author, you're a comedian, you're a writer, you're an animator, you're uh, just a mom at home who likes to show off her duck collection because you got a lot of ceramic ducks. We'll make a Squarespace website and you can show off all that stuff. Squarespace is the place to create your own site. They have these incredible templates that you can use or you can just go rogue and make your own. They have member areas, easy for creators to monetize your content and expertise in a way that fits your brand with member areas. You can unlock a new revenue stream for your business uh, right in time to schedule it by selling 
access to gated content like videos, online courses, or newsletters. They got email campaigns and a video studio where you can create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive those sales. Look, if you're looking to create a site, this is the place. I love it because I like using analytics. Uh, analytics uh, use the insights to help grow the business, learn where the site visits and sales are coming from so we know where you guys are, where you're buying tickets, where I can come, to which city I should avoid, which city I should double down. Uh, that's my favorite thing to use the analytics on the site. So if you're looking to build a site, why are you looking anywhere else other than Squarespace? They've been proven for so long now, and I've been using them for quite a while. Please keep sending in your videos to me. Uh, you guys keep sending videos into I'm a Santino fan at gmail.com uh, with your Squarespace website that you use. We might feature it on the show. Who knows? Keep wa- keep making those sites. Keep sending them in. Head to squarespace.com slash whiskey, squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace.com slash whiskey. Use the offer code whiskey when you're ready to launch, baby. 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by BetterHelp. Hey, I've talked about therapy so frequently on this show, you're probably tired of hearing it, but listen up again. Um, Therapy, I think, is very important to communicate uh, to somebody else how you're feeling and what's going on. You can't keep it bottled up. Can't just do what the Irish Catholics did for way too long. My whole family never told each other anything. And then finally, we all went to therapy and look at us now. Happy as a clam. Is a clam happy? I don't know. Talk to your therapist about it. Uh, If you're thinking about giving therapy a try, this is a phenomenal option because you can do it from the comfort of your own home. These are licensed professionals uh, who are here to help you. You can change at any time. uh, And getting to know yourself is going to be a lifelong process. Uh, So therapy is about deepening your self-awareness and understanding. So do yourself a favor. BetterHelp is going to connect you with licensed therapists who can take on that journey of self-discovery wherever you are. If you're thinking about giving therapy a try, give it a try. BetterHelp, baby. It's entirely done online. Uh, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So what do you got to do to help yourself from the comfort of your own home? Uh, discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash whiskey. That's BetterHelp, better H-E-L-P dot com slash whiskey today to get 10% off your first month. BetterHelp.com slash whiskey. Ginger. I like gingers. No, but we really <laughs> have fun here. It's just the Heimlich. And also say, imagine the time you take. What if somebody, you got it out, You if you got him a, a half a second earlier, his brain wouldn't, he would have been okay. But you did it too late because you were too busy getting out the word ma- maneuver. Also, what could you guys give him the, what's it called? The Heimlich, um, people like, the boat? No, 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 he's choking the Heimlich, uh, uh, the newspaper? Oh, it starts with an M. <laughs> Boo, bubble me. <laughs> I want bubbles to rain down on you right now so bad. Like, Dude, you have the fucking craziest voices and sound effects in your body. That's exactly what a bubble machine sounds like. No, that's what they like. sound like. Because they're, yeah, they're not efficient. You know what I mean? They're, it's a shitty little fan because that spits them out. Updated, they're never on Shark Tank. Like, we made a better mousetrap of a, a bubble, bubble machine. machine. And they, <laughs> Mr. Wonderful, dun, 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 What does this bubble machine offer that other bubble machines don't offer? What's stopping me from putting $800,000 in and having my own bubble machine that I'm working for me? And crush you like the ants that you are. Cockroach. Cockroach, that's what he said. Come on, dude. That guy's great. Yeah. I saw Lori one time at the airport in Chicago, because I think she's from Chicago. hmm And she tried to skip the security line and went through the, you know, where the employees go, you know, just to the left there. I don't blame her. Let me tell you something. Shut down. Not in Chicago. Not in <laughs> Chicago. She got shut down. The woman, the woman was literally, I just all I was in the line and all I saw was a woman go like this. Right. <laughs> Didn't did, even did, just... she pull, did she pull out her, her 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 golden ticket, which is just like this thin, cheap bullshit. You know what? I shouldn't shouldn't do that. Shouldn't, right. Be careful. I just feel like it's a little manipulative when she I feel like when she pulls out the golden ticket for people that don't watch the show, it it's she represents like it's a bigger deal. Oh yeah, it's a big deal. But no, the woman at the airport literally looked her right in the eyes and went like this. Didn't even, di- I mean, didn't even, didn't even motion her lips to saying, "No, you can't come." She just went like this, and she was like, uh, she couldn't believe it. She had to go all the way back around. Dude, there's a clip. Is it Lori? What's the other it, one? Barbara's Barbara. the other one. No, it was Lori. There's a clip from a uh, <clears throat> from Shark Tank that I just sent to somebody, so I'm going to pull it up and just play the audio. That is so funny. Big it's... Tank fan, by the way. We should go on the Tank. I, I, 
I don't want to talk about it here. Because I have Because I have so many ideas and thoughts, and well, I think about this all the time. Well, do you want me to tell you something? Yes. I know someone that books the show. Well, uh, I'm, I happen to be an NBC baby myself. Well, or, let's I mean, go, let's sorry, get an on ABC there. baby now. Yeah, great. And let's talk about it in a little bit. Okay. Because I have, when I was a kid, I didn't know if I would be on TV or if I even necessarily wanted to. I knew movies or something, but what I would fantasize was two things. One, award shows, winning an award, who even knows what for. Mm. And two was late night. Because I always thought about what were the bits you could do. On late night. Shark Tank is built for it. I watch Shark Tank in pause. It's all, bi- it's all bit it. based. It's bit based, the whole thing. I, I never thought about awards when I was a kid. That never got to me. Oh, yeah. It wasn't awards. It was the speeches. But that was always a daunting thing. Whenever I saw award shows, I thought, what a daunting atmosphere. That makes me so nervous, all those people. I hate wow. that. You probably have nothing to worry about. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. And also for the algorithm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, how you all doing today? My name is Mrs. Jenny Goldfarb, and I'm from the mean streets in New York City. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> David, David just, I don't know if it was edited that way. I'm I out. don't remember. I'm from the mean, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that show. Wait, who said I'm out? Who was Damon. it? Damon. Oh, yeah, Damon. Yeah, the he would. I'm out. <laughs> um, Damon, I'm out. So the, uh, the, uh, the no deal thing made me think of a story that if I think about it and you want to, I almost want to put the clip up. You know, my, my, I do stuff with my dad and Teddy all the time. Always, yeah. Um, my 200th episode is about to come out. Uh, 200th episode of Tyso. Yeah, and wow. uh, I'm going to uh, reveal who it is now. My fr- the first episode I this, ever- This comes out in a few days. Yeah, so That's it'll okay. be a week after. Okay, good. Uh, next week is Big J. Okerson, then it's 200th episode. 200th episode is the first episode I ever recorded. It wasn't the first that I put up, but the first I ever recorded of Take Your Shoes Off was Dad and Teddy. So here we are, four years, almost to the day later, Dad, Teddy, great, great episode. Stoned out of your head. So stoned. And Teddy is, the, 40% of it is, ta- he is fascinated with Hitler. He knows everything there is to know about Hitler. I don't think he loves Hitler. In fact, I bet he, I know he hates Hitler. My money's on he doesn't like him. Hates him. Yeah. But fascinated. Yeah, the guy's fascinated. Talking so much, and he's talking so much about, it's a lot of Hitler talk. But um, there was an episode- That'll that, get demonetized. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's not like, it's not gratuitous. Nah, it doesn't matter. But we do a game show with, where, where, where I read, uh, I, 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 I have a whole bunch of Hitler facts, and I do facts where I talk about, I list real, true or false, basically, and I say Hitler facts. And uh, t- he know, and then I also like multiple choice. He's getting a lot of the Hitler stuff. You get hold on. I have to read you this because I wrote in my phone the other day. Look at the first note. The first note in my phone. You think Hitler? You think Hitler ever Robert. sent a postcard? Like imagine Hitler is on a little vacation, sends someone a postcard. It's like, hey, visiting Switzerland for the first time, and you're a, a family friend of Hitler's, and you get a postcard from him, and you put it up on the fridge because we had sent the nieces a postcard, and I thought. Who sent in these? Who sent? Who sent in these? Like, and like, then imagine if Hitler sends a postcard, and then the war breaks out, and everyone's like, "Should we take that off the fridge?" Right. <laughs> it's from. It's from he's it's he's from he's his like his his girlfriend's on the beach, and he sends a postcard. He's like, "Hope ever staying bronzed." <laughs> fucking awful. Come on, we have fun. Come on, we have a lot of fun. But, give me a give me one Hitler fact. Um, or give me one that I don't know. Here's what here's what that was fact so or funny. Fiction. I don't remember the details of it, but uh, uh but I was uh. I, it was like a true or false. Um, it was something about Hitler's relationship with his father. Huh. And it turns out, and I was shocked, didn't have a great relationship with him. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what it was. But <laughs> talking about like whatever Hitler's dad did or something. And Teddy's like, true. <laughs> like, you know, no shit. Come on, Teddy. Uh, I don't remember, but I was too stoned. What did Hitler's dad do for a living? Do you remember that? <clears throat> uh, I think neglect his, his son. Ah, I paid well. Paid off. You know, it was interesting to think that like everyone hates Hitler. Rightfully so. Oh, come on. There's got to be a couple. There's, there's co- Look it. I'm not saying everybody. There's some of the listeners. <laughs> you know, no. well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, everyone hates no Hitler. No one's blaming the dad. Well, yeah, it's not the dad's fault. Well, it's not his art teacher's fault either. But oh, I, the art teacher thing is bullshit. That's a new age way of that. That's been infused in the new like. We're, talk, uh, we're not talking about lemonade here. Yeah, we are infused. Well, that that's infused in culture now of the zeitgeist of like. Oh, and you know he failed at an art school. It's like that. That's that's that has nothing to do with. You want to talk about? Uh, it was methamphetamine. Okay, you yeah. just went from strong tank Santino, which I was about to be like, I can't deal with strong tank Santino right now, <laughs> and you turn it into a little bit of a joke. Yeah, methamphetamines. It was methamphetamines. And I thought to myself, it was poppers. That guy liked poppers. He was having fucking orgies on poppers, <clears throat> and then was bummed that people caught him. Are those the things that you like? You go like this too after you 
get yeah, in the bubble mail. wrap. That uh, bub poppers bubble is what bubble. we call them in Chicago. Poppers. So I did an episode. Kitty corner, caddy corner. Say it again. Kitty corner or caddy corner. It depends on if we're golfing or not. We're we haven't golfed ever. Then caddy corner. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did an episode. It was <clears throat> Teddy, my mom, my dad on this side, and me and Howie Mandel on this side. Love. It's five Jews in a room. Howie, of course, had never met my family before. But... Who's the most Jewish? That's a good question. Yeah, we're all pretty. We're I all know. Pretty... And let me tell you how, how, what kind of Jewish we all are. The best kind. Mm. Let me tell you what I mean. Mm. Okay. Right, well, please tell me what you mean. Okay. We're the Ashkenazi kind. And I say that not that there's anything wrong with the yeah, other. Don't but, be diminutive about it. Um, but, that. uh. Thank you. But like, we're the, we're not the tall statuesque hot ones. We're the, my back hurts funny, um, uh, uh, that's tradition it. one. Just say my back hurts funny ones. Yeah. We're the, my back hurts funny Jews. <laughs> we're not, yeah, we're the, yeah, I don't even have to say what the other ones are. What kind of Jewish are you? Are you Orthodox reformed? I'm the back hurts funny kind of Jew. <laughs> <laughs> that is such an obvious category. <laughs> are you the tall olive skinned? <laughs> Slender, beautiful model ones. No, we're the my backwards funny ones. <laughs> we're the my backwards funny Jews. And also some of us with a, a tremendous obstacle of obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah. So <laughs> At the, my backwards is hand in hand with that, yeah. by the way. Um, Phantom pains. Um, there's a joke that I heard, um, and I asked this person if this was their joke, and they go, no, it's apparently it's a stock joke, but he did it on stage. So for I, that reason, I'm not going to credit it because it's- It's everyone's joke. Um, and maybe you've heard it. I never have, and it's so simple. But he goes, I'm Jewish. Um, or he goes, you know how people know I'm, you know how you know, he goes, you know how you know somebody's Jewish? Mm. Have you heard this before? Mm -mm. They'll tell you. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. it's like, what a simple, yeah. clean, but it feels like. I've heard that thing, that setup for else. other, yeah, Harvard is the joke. You know how right, someone yeah. went to Harvard? You know yeah, how you I know someone, yeah, they, they say it. Joke. Yeah, they say it. Um, but that's also true, <clears> by the way. That is, I've, I have genuinely felt that. I like always thought Harvard people. Yeah, but I was like, "That's bullshit." What do you mean? Then this girl that we know in my old group of friends, they called her. I'm her not going to say her name, but they would call. They called her, you know, Sarah from Harvard because she. That's all she would right. talk about constantly. I should we should talk to other people. We're, we're, it's too late. Huh? Uh, I said it's too late. What? We should start telling people we're from Harvard. They won't believe it. Well, that's too late. But if we did it when we got here. I just still, even if we, when we got no, here, dude, you, you could have gotten away with it. What? Because I'm an intellectual? Jew. <laughs> I almost got mad, but I remembered you were probably being silly. <laughs> I just hate when somebody sneezes and doesn't do the setup. Sorry. Go ahead. You know how they would have known you no, went to Harvard? I mean, ah. Oh. What? Ah, Jew. Ah, Jew. Yeah. So I want to tell you this thing. So we're doing this podcast. It's great. It's funny. Everyone is doing their thing. Teddy is so stoned. Teddy is so stoned. He's, Are we talking edibles or, or, or smoke? Oh, he, he, I've, been, I've been around. Yeah. Okay. I've never met anybody in the world who smokes like Teddy as much as Teddy does. He smokes all day. It's not just all day. He's the weed with the hash, with the wax, with the stuff and the thick, and he rolls it like- He's you a know, chemist he's a, now. And he's the biggest and the biggest plumes, and he doesn't stop. He's, and he gets to a point where he's just like, I don't even know why you like doing what you're doing. He's incoherent. It gets sometimes to the point. He's just a, he's a, he knows what he's doing and he likes it and he's on vacation, I guess. Leave him alone. So he now is getting to the point, right, where he's high and he's excited because he's so sweet because he's very successful. He's a musician. He does jingles. He's a great piano player. He's cool. He smokes. He does jazz. He's Long Island. He's this, he's that. But when he sees something he likes, Howie Mandel, this is, I mean, he's excited. This mm -hmm. is cool. There is no faking the excitement of the celebrity. Right. Does that make sense? Like yeah. it exists for him and he's excited about it. He's interested and he's engaged and he's listening and stuff. He's getting more and more high and you know, he's just doing his own thing. And Howie says something, I don't remember what it was, but Teddy hadn't talked in five minutes. And then Howie asks for something, maybe whatever. And then Teddy who's goes, No deal. <laughs> he starts <laughs> out almost like almost bullying Howie for the rest of the episode, dude. <laughs> This should be called the Four Neurotic Jews. That's what I think. What should be called? This you're, podcast. Okay, so what, uh, are you, you're not too neurotic. 
Oh, I'm neurotic. Yeah, no, well, you're, you're just high. Tray, are you? I'm over the tray, Howie. I'm here. Oh, you're over the plate. He's over a plate. He's over a plate. No deal. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to these two guys now. <laughs> and we're all high. Uh, 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 Howie doesn't do that. So Howie's just in a living room with these people. Stoned I don't... out of their mind. Yeah, and and he's just, you know, Howie is charming and usually the center of the thing. And he's and he still kind of is a lot of the time. But there's a little bit of a battle that's mm -hmm. kind of happening between just the Glassmans and Howie. Because he played along, I'm sure. Of course, it was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just there was a moment where Teddy is just excited that Howie Mandel's there. <laughs> and then he goes, no deal, dude! <laughs> you know? And we weren't even talking about Deal or No Deal anyway. But yet you were, because in his mind, he heard. Yeah, of course. I gotta say Deal or yeah, How yeah. could I not? Yeah. That's... He's maybe thinking of it for like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, just, he just got the balls. To say no. And then he's just bullying him for a little bit. Did Howie kind of turn a little bit or no? No, how he goes harder back. He does. Of course. Not to, I, like I, actually, that I actually saw and I, 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 something I'd never seen him in that episode. I saw the little like. I saw like, oh, he was like the alpha male. Howie. I saw Howie being the alpha, because he's such a friendly, you know, at least now, like he's like this network friendly But what you're saying, he, he, he wanted to kind of broaden his shoulders because you guys were, because it was almost felt like he was being ganged up on? No, not at all. It was, it was I think, at least the way I take that, I, th I love that shit. Yeah, it's, it's like fun. you're playing ball and you're pushing people around. I'm like, ooh, I want to push. No, I just, it, it just, he just didn't, he just leaned in even harder. Uh. He's just now... He's doing his jokes to like, why don't you quit drooling on yourself or whatever the things are, you know? And it just, it was fun. It was great. Yeah. But I'm just saying that like. Was he drooling on himself? No. There was no moment of that? I don't know. Maybe. Howie. Pulling stuff out of, out of the air then. Well, huh? he sees somebody. Well, you know. Shout out to Howie Knows Best. No damn! <laughs> What's the name of this podcast? You've done it. Yeah. Howie. Uh, Howie. Uh, Howie. Uh, Howie uh, how don't. How we doing? <laughs> hey, how we doing? How we... No, but man. He did prank calls with me on the show. I never made it on the show because it was insane and it just didn't work. I, I saw an episode. The pranks didn't make it on. He prank right, called sure. a bunch of places. Right. And I was, and then his producer was like, should we use those? I was like, no. Because they weren't funny or they were. Well, I didn't really, I was barely in it. He was like, can we do some prank calls? Yeah, he did that with me and then and he I, just did it. And I was like, I don't really want, I don't know. No. Did you like prank calls as a kid? Yes. Loved when I was a kid, Did but because there was an there was an air of mystery mm. of like you mm. just do 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 do, and yeah, I got it. And uh, you would it that I, I always loved playing the long game. I like like the long like form. You're still still doing something you've been doing since I, you were nine. All right, well you ready? Yes. Mark Kilpatrick of uh, thirteen forty five West Elm Road. Uh, your daughter's not dead. We've got her. Uh, we had her. It's been 28 years, and I feel like the jig is up. We got to say it. Oh, I can't say it. I feel like the gig is up. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to all the jigs out there. <laughs> hey. hey. Rick Rubin is going to sign us any minute now. Uh, I think I could do what he does, and I'm not even kidding. 100%. He said openly, you're like, what's your talent? He's like, I have people No, not like... because he's not talented, but because I am a great music producer. No, 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 no. Do that again? No, 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 no. 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 But see, the no, 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 no's are more on rhythm than it's... So it's who is really doing the producing? Whoa. We'll be right back. Dude, sometimes when I meet people... Time out. Go ahead. I will. Uh, uh, they give. They give a handshake, mm -hmm. and I go. We don't give handshakes in this house, brother. And then I go like this. Blow it up. Yeah, you gotta. But how? Mu how much? I, I just try to match whatever they do. Let them. I suggest an idea, and then I let them take control of it. I like that give and take. I do like prank calls when I was a kid. I I used to love it because it would. We, I was the only one that had the balls. My fr a couple of my friends would do it, but. They would let me, I would always go, you know. Prank call me. I'm going to be, uh, as a kid, though, what's a store? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Toys R Us. I would never do that. Right. You You'd be Ace Hardware. Ace Hardware. Okay, all right. Um, give, give him a call. But, and since you do effects, do you mind doing the ring, ring, ring? Of course. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> hey, I said ring, not doing an impression of my mother-in-law. Blah, 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 bl
Ace I, Hardware. Hey, is this Ace Hardware? Yes, it is. Ace Hardware, where you know if you need a hammer, we got it. <laughs> okay. Is everything... Hey, yeah, in aisle seven, Brian. The hammers are in aisle seven. Is everything inside of there hard? Um... We have a lot of hardware. Is that what you're asking? Where is all the hardware? Uh, well, we uh, we have. What, what are you looking for? What kind of stuff are you looking for? I'm kind. Of, I'm looking for um something hard that right? can wear an ace. Okay, I, that'll be an ILA, dude. Peace. <laughs> Helpful, dude. If I, because I would, if that were be for real, if I was answering, and I, I would know if I was being pranked if it was like that. You know, 100%. obviously. Um, so I would. I would want to do it like that. And fuck with them back a little bit. But not let them know I know. Yeah. But when you're young and you're 16 and you work at those jobs. Dude, I was like that. That's why I knew I, I knew we could do what Rick Rubin does. When people call me, dude, and they solicit stuff, hey, such and such, blah, 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 blah. I go, Abs- absolutely. Yeah, give me one sec. What is this about? And they'll say, well, we're looking at it. I go, huh. And I'll do it. And I'll talk to them for minutes and minutes. I don't have the time. Ask, well, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> It also it fills me up, man. It fills me because yeah. I'm not being mean, but I get to play the game I want to play. Right. I never say, "Well, that's what you get, asshole." No. You know, it's just I just do it. You and just then, have some fun. Yeah, and then leaving it with it is interesting and just asking genuine questions. I don't understand, like really, like because of course I don't understand what's going on because how is that a real thing that people are calling people to right. tell them about this stuff? So I'm really trying to better understand. I get calls like this all the time, and I I usually don't even listen. I never really understand. Could you explain it to me? And then I let them talk, and I just keep asking questions. Is it ever intriguing? Are you ever interested, genuinely? Um, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't remember. Like one time, I, I had one of those. Uh, no, Jesus Christ, Latter Day Saints, a door, door to door guy. One time, I heard him out. I said, okay, what? Well, give it to me. Right. I think that's awesome. By the way, I said one time because the most other days I'm like, guys, I'm not, I don't want to. I have, I don't have any time to do this. I'm busy. But I said, give it to me, and they were shocked. He was like, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, and then he started this, this spiel and uh, <clears throat> I answered all his questions honestly. And at the end, he's like, do you want literature? I said, do I have to pay for it? He said, no. I said, no. I would have rather had to pay for it. I feel like free <laughs> literature is bullshit. Right. <laughs> Just make, sure. If it's a book, I had to buy it. I'd be like, I'll buy this book. Maybe would it's worth really? it. Yeah, if it was, yeah. Free literature is bullshit. That's bullshit. Yeah, I don't like- you know what free literature is? So I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him out one time. I did hear him out one time. But I'll, I, I will, I can't, I don't answer the calls anymore about the random number thing because I just, it's infuri- it's, it's infuri- I'd rather be people, but when it's robots, it drives me nuts. I walk People out- don't bother me. If it's a, if it's a f- 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 telemarketer. Do that again. If it's a, keep doing that. It's if it's up, but keep the if it's up. If it's a, 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 if you're leading me down, the, leading saying. me down, the, leading me, leading me, leading me, leading I'm me. I'm going to lead you down the road so leading you me, could understand me, and realize that me, if I push you up on top leading me, of leading me, leading hand, me, leading I can, me, can offer you leading some me, instincts on your leading own me, leading faith, me, but if you don't, I 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 because he is a fluid personality. I gotta tell you, uh, he is bipolar. Lock, locked up. He's in trouble, bubble. Dude, that was good. That little riff a diff we did. I um, I love this man. I'm loving what's happening right now. You're I'm vibing. Loving, I'm loving this vibe. I'm loving this room. I'm loving my family. And you know who I've been loving a lot recently, and I've loved him before. Say it. Me. I want to bring this up for real, if you want to be honest about it. You tweeted the other day that you, something something to the effect of, I'm paraphrasing that, you're not ashamed to say that you've reached a place where you're finding self-love in real life. That that's more than a paraphrase. That's a little out of context, but it yeah, is but close. it's, it's close. definitely a good category. It's it's it's. I would say it's more than two days away. Then give it to me. Imagine we're saying we're going to lunch. 
Um, it was more so that I was, I'm, I was going through it a little bit and I was having a hard time for a bit and I tried something that I've heard before, which was just like, just choose to be happy. And like, I've heard that before. And I also get that message. I was never able to do it. Mm. Like when people say, you know, to do positive affirmations and look in the mirror and say, I am great, I am strong, I am a badass mother who don't take no crap from nobody. Once again, Junior, I see pride. I see power. I see a badass mother who don't take no crap from nobody. <laughs> and one day, I might be able to live in Buckingham Palace, which I, by the way, have you seen London Has Fallen? No. See it. <laughs> All right. So, but the reason that doesn't work when you're like, I is good, I is smart. People, what is it, you know, from the help? What is that one? I is good, good I is I'm kind, smart. I is yeah. smart. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's just the way they said it. That's what it was. You could have done the Stuart Smalley one. What is that? With Michael Jordan in the mirror on SNL. Oh, I'm good enough and smart enough and doggone it, people like me. Mm -hmm. So the, that doesn't work, at least not for me. You know why that doesn't work for me? No mirrors. <laughs> I mean, I guess if there's a mirror around. <laughs> What do you think? What do you guys live in a house of fucking mirrors? You think I live in a carnival? You know, it's funny that you say that because in a way we do live in a world of them because every time we see something in somebody we don't like, we're really looking at a reflection of ourselves. Truth bullets. You're good. You know what, dude? You, you what would be a fun bit is if you had your shirt off or on, <laughs> but I guess it could be on. It's a shirt that had buttons, right? And, and you know how like hot women get sushi eaten off their pussy and tits by rich, ugly guys? <laughs> You would be one of those, but you'd be laying out a thing, and then people push a button, but and make a noise. <laughs> but yeah, but you, but it doesn't matter what button they push; they don't have to pre-program because you're there listening. That's the brilliance of it. And so that, like, you're like, oh yeah, and then, and then, and sometimes they might push a button, and, and it's like you don't even know, so you make something up. Right. But you're just there. But also, just for the bit, you're naked with sushi on your balls and sushi <laughs> on your fucking nips, nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Nipples, nipples, nipples. Gig, gig. Free the nipples, free the nipples, free the nipples. Um, who would you rather free? Uh, who's somebody who's locked up that people want to free right Julian now? Julian Assange. Julian Assange? Or the nipples? I've got to go That's with good Julian merch. Assange. Yeah. Free. And, you, and you have free Julian Assange, free Julian Assange. And, th and then it says that, but once they want to free the nipples, they cut that out. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so... The reason that that self-talk doesn't work is because I'm saying what I'm supposed to say. I'm saying something. Um, I'm going to tell you something. It'll maybe take some minutes. So I'll be serious, but we'll probably do jokes too. Yeah, yeah. We'll mix it up like we always do. Is fun? Yeah. Okay. We'll toss a joke in there. May I? Yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> That's me pushing a button. Oh. On your... <laughs> Dude. There it is. You know what? I want to do a solo <laughs> podcast called Pushing Buttons with Glassman. And the opening, as I say, one thing that week that pushed my buttons, and then for the rest of the hour, I'm just pushing buttons. You're doing sounds, <laughs> you're doing but you're naked on the desk with sushi <laughs> on your dick. <laughs> <laughs> and the, yeah, anyway, all right. Tell me why self affirmation doesn't work. Well, it's, it's, I do agree to stop you for a second. The we know, the, your the podcast the, should be called "I Do Agree to Stop You for a Second." Well, yeah, you're saying what somebody told you to say. Right. That's bullshit. So the problem is you don't believe it. It's not your words, right? not your thoughts. So here's what I've been doing over the years. <clears throat> and this started with stand-up because I was always petrified to go on stage. Uh, and not just when I started. I'm eight years in and I'm crying sometimes because I, I literally have no idea what I'm going to talk about because I always had to do new stuff. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing this. I don't know how to do this. I'm embarrassed. Right. Okay. I was around for all that. So... um. Sometimes I would feel like I'm in the pocket, I'm ready, and sometimes I was scared and I couldn't control it. And I had a moment, I've talked about this part of my podcast, not after this, but where I was so nervous and I, I recognized I had been so nervous so many times. And then I really, it wasn't just a trick, I really said something that I believed, which was, I think I'm supposed to be nervous. Not just, it's okay to be nervous, right. but really accepting like the way I'm wired, who I am, I'm supposed to be, I'm a nervous guy, I get nervous. I'm supposed to be nervous. And once I recognize I'm supposed to be nervous, I'm still nervous. I still have the cortisol in my veins, but there was no shame in it. And there was no need to me to wipe my palms or pretend I wasn't nervous. There was no need to mask. There was no need for me to not be present in myself because I'm supposed to be, I'm a nervous person. That changed something for me because now I'm on stage and I'm nervous. Right. And it, there's a trick where you acknowledge your feelings, and that is a trick. Yeah. 
But the deeper thing, the reason you acknowledge it is because once you get it out, you realize it's not that bad. The, the, the root, the sustainable version is success, accept who you are because then you've acknowledged it to yourself already. So now I go on, whenever I'm scared or nervous or something like, Rick, you get like this all the time. It just makes it easier. So that was the first time like me saying to myself, you're supposed to be nervous. You're supposed to be scared. You're supposed to be able to fail here. That works for me. So I had that. That's very logical. When something is logical enough where it makes sense, it makes the emotional part changes the perspective of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can still talk, talk about this. Yeah, I like it. So what I've noticed within myself is if my emotions are very strong and they, they are with certain things and certain times, even if I logically am able to like parent myself, like if you're drunk, for example, and you're walking weird, talking weird, you could say to yourself, buddy, you're drunk. You're not going to not be drunk anymore, but now you know this isn't who you are. Maybe sit down or whatever tools you've come up with. Yeah. That's logical. That's what you're able to talk yourself down and you'll still be drunk, but you're better. But when the emotions are so strong, that doesn't work. Like I'm drunk. Yeah, but I can't control it. I'm going to throw up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but when the emotions are at a certain point, the logical voice is, it's my mom saying it's time for bed. And I go, yeah, but I'm, I want to finish Willow. You know, it's not going to happen lady yeah. <laughs> you know it's good luck. this is where i am good luck bitch <laughs> yeah good luck you fucking bitch <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say to me what did you just say to me pause on mad martigan listen mom <laughs> i went to bed at 10 last night why is it a problem now yeah you fucking bitch, bitch. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry ricky you're so special that's right you fucking bitch now make me some more on no, soup. soup. Make me more some more on, on soup. soup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, black people. Uh, I mean, black guys. Uh, <laughs> black guys. Uh, I, I grew up, I had, uh, I had a lot of black friends. You could probably tell. Yeah. People either think I'm from New York or I had a lot of black friends. <laughs> it's never, neither, both. never both. They, um, black people would always tell me these two things. One. Brother, <laughs> no, 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 I'm just kidding. I don't know. I'm just a little so stoned. Stupid. They would, uh, they would talk about. Uh, I, I never yelled at my mom, bitch. I, I mean, obviously we're joking, but I was a smart ass to my mom. Yeah. What the, what the hell? You know, like, like, there's two kiwi strawberry snapples left, and my friend asked if I could have one, and I go, I don't have enough to give you, and my mom's like, you have two left. I'm like, I don't want to give him my last. I can have one. I'm giving him my last one. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, I, I did that, <laughs> and that kind of stuff. I wasn't really like, what the hell? I was just, you know, like, come on. This is the uh, my back hurts funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is all the my back hurts funny. So when a black friend, let me tell you this, when a black friend. Here's their white friend say to their mom, what the hell? That's my last snapple, you fucking bitch. <laughs> They're always very surprised because at least where I grew up in Northeast Ohio, black people did not talk back to their moms. If I could say one thing about the black guys, they do not talk back to their moms. Have you heard this? Yeah. Do we what have any mean, black friends think, we could get on the Chris phone? I think Chris Rock joked about this. I think he put it in one of his specials. That you can't. That's what that talk bad white, about white people talk back to their mom. Well, Shut up, mom. <laughs> yeah, well, the white I didn't, I didn't say that. The black comic white impression is my favorite. It's, it's yeah, always like, it's... uh, yeah, whatever, Rick. We'll go to do some <laughs> yeah. taxes. You know what? It works. <laughs> yeah, it's right. Yeah, it does. It's, <laughs> it's like when time. Conan does his nerdy guy. It's yeah. just like, it's yeah, it's, it's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, technically, my penis is only that way because I just got out of the water. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, thanks. Every white guy at the beach. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. What were we talking about? Black people, you really, babies. You really were talking in the initial version of this of falling Black in love with- Black people and babies. Falling in love with yourself. Um, it's out of context, dude. If it's just that clip, it's really funny to show me just talking too You're much. You're in love with yourself. Talking too much. And then and they're like, what were we talking about? And you're like, you were telling me about how in love with yourself you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah, but in a very healthy way. No, no, it is good. So- When I read it, I was happy for you. Um, should I keep going? I really don't need to at all. I would like it actually. I think it's nice. So what I found was when I was like, be Rick, just be happy. Um, I'm like, I have practice in talking to myself. Um, like I talk to myself out loud sometimes. Uh, buddy, it's time for bed. That kind of stuff. Listen, I know you don't want to go to bed. Why don't you just go wash up now? I'll say out loud. I'll say in my head. I have the parent talk out loud. I think like, I think I don't want to. And he goes, I don't want, and I, I say this out loud. Like I'm a crazy person. I go, it's like, I don't want to go to bed now. 
and you'll look. It I up. don't. I don't really look up because I'm thinking, you know. But like I'm, ha- and then but out loud the parent and I go, how about this? Wash your face, brush your teeth. If you want to come back down, you can. And I go, I don't want to. I think I don't want to. And I go, I go, I don't want to either. Let's go. <laughs> like I do that for real. And I go, if somebody is just watching me, I go, I don't want to. I don't. Okay. And I go wash my face. You know, I never really thought of it that way. <laughs> Man, but, that tweet seems so innocent and um, heartfelt. But um, now it's I know you're having psychotic episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I'll do that. I do that, but I do it with like a. The gym is the first one where I always they say just got to show up. Where I where I literally will go. Every time you are like this, every time you're doing this thing where you're like, Ugh, I don't know, you always go remember the exact feeling the moment you leave the gym. Yeah. The moment I leave the gym, it's the best feeling I've ever had. I'm always like, that was easy. I'm glad I did it. It took up no time in my day. Cut to a clip. That was easy. It took like no time in my day. I'm glad I did it. And we're back. So it works. Yeah. It works. It does. It really does work. If you could tap into that thing and it makes enough sense. If, if, If the person who doesn't want to go could remember that thing well enough. Yeah. Then it works. And it's similar where if it's not just a feeling of something you've done, if it's similar if it's if this person who doesn't feel good, isn't happy, is insecure, is ashamed, hasn't accepted himself, could remember what it's like to actually do it and what that feels like. But in order to do that, you have to have that, yeah. right? I was thinking on my way over here something um, about, because I, I was feeling really mellow. And I'm like, I love that it's a, there's a confidence in the mellowness when you still feel silly. Do you know what that is? Where it's mm-hmm. like, you know, you don't have to prove yourself. Yeah. Maybe you'll get big, maybe you won't, but you just, you know you're great. You're already there, is right. what I used to say. Well, I'm already there. You're already there. Yeah. So the idea of like, you don't have to prove yourself, I thought, that is a lovely sentiment. And I could be wrong, I just thought of this today. But I don't think that's fair to say to anybody. I think you don't have to prove yourself after you've proven yourself. Correct. Now, it's different to say I have to prove myself to these people that aren't relevant to my self-worth, you know, these but like, you have to at least do it to yourself. Yeah. And unless you're perfectly enlightened from jump, one of the ways you could be like accepting of yourself and feel like you've proved things to yourself is to get some external validation. It's the truth. Yeah. You know, you think you're funny. You've been funny enough. If you lived in a, in a hut wrong? and no comedy clubs, you wouldn't know that. Point is, you have to prove it to yourself. So how could you believe that you're good enough or that you're, you deserve to be here or whatever Unless you've proven it somehow, right? That's where the work comes in. That's where you got to do, you got to find, and here's where something that is like not necessarily objective, but I believe you got to find something you're good at. You got to find, it doesn't have to be your career. It doesn't even have to be something with your hands or something that someone's called a skill. It could be communicating with people. It could be eating pussy really well. Mm -hmm. At least as, as long as one of the two. Yeah. Cooking, knowing a lot about birds, whatever it is, have something like that you care about, that you collecting cards, you know, fantasy sports, anything. Find something and become really good at it. And then you're like, I'm fucking good at this thing. And that feeling is like the cheat code into then feeling good about everything else. Because, yeah, because I don't have to think I'm the best chef. If I know what it's like to feel proud of myself and good at something, I've already, I've proven it. I'm already there. Yeah, let me just fucking be not a great chef i love cooking man Mm -hmm. like if you could find that feeling that feeling of leaving the gym doesn't have to be the gym it could be i don't want a podcast or i remember that feeling when you finish something it could be not leaving the gym but accomplish something or defeat something or grow in something whatever it is so find something that you could like tap into so when you look in the mirror and i say i'm great it's like no i'm not I'm not. not I'm yet. not great yet. Not yet. And just like when you're working out, if your body's not there, if you do it for two weeks straight, you, you're going to feel good. So you might look in the mirror and, and not think I'm the strongest, but you're like, I, I look better. Like, that's even enough. Yeah. You don't have to master something is what I'm saying. Have something that you like, see yourself get better, want to get better. That feeling. So because the irony is there is no mastering. It doesn't exist. There is no mastering, but I, I don't even mean that spiritual. Some people just, you know, like they suck, but good for you. Yeah, but it's okay. You're getting better at yourself. But I mean, even the best isn't over. That's the thing. Right. But I'm saying there's a difference of you with year two comedian and now. You sure. But like even year two, when you know, like, I'm still maybe even doing bringer shows, 
But like, I have a couple of jokes that are working. You're feeling it. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm getting, I'm getting good. Yeah. So I'm on the couch. I'm not feeling well. I'm like, just feel like, be happy. And I'm like, how? And I'm like, I have like some tangible tools that I tap in. like this. Like think of a moment when you were like, I think of this stuff. And I was like, well, and then I just felt some gratitude about some people in my life, some things that I've been doing and have accomplished the way I think of my stand up now. Um, and I was just like, that just made me feel good. And like, even if it was for a second, because of that thing I wrote, I wrote even just for a few moments and it lasted still, it's been days. Um, that feeling. And I realized like, just be, and, and the idea of like, just like be okay. And then I thought of stuff that made me feel okay. And then I realized, oh, I could go back to the other thing. But just by like sitting in it long enough, I, I didn't like cheat myself. Only think about what you're grateful for, which I guess is also cool. But like, I just had a moment that was visceral and enough of me like being happy and content that I'm like, oh, I'm happy and content. And it was like, and I, and I messaged it. I, I posted it and I said something like in the comments, I almost didn't post because admittingly I was like, because it opened with like, I've been going through it a little bit and, yeah. and, but like, you don't need to check in on me. I'm okay. I didn't want it to seem like attention seeking. Like when people are posting stuff where admittingly I judge it on my own projections, but that's not how I, I don't mean to post that way. I'm trying to post like a cool thing because I thought like, I found like a cheat code. You found the game genie for your emotions. At least, you know, for an emotion where the thing that was bothering me is, you know, at a, it's about something and I'm not going to get into, but like, yeah. it's, it's okay. There's, you know, like, it's okay. Sometimes you're passionate about a certain thing or, you know, so it was a little bit easier, but, uh. And it's still with you right now. Yeah, it's still with me right now. Not just the feeling of like the gratitude of the things I was thinking about then, but just the like, I feel like a a sense of control of myself that makes like I feel more confident. I feel like like how like powerful the mind is and perspective is, and like self acceptance and cornily enough, but like not really like self love and like. I mean, people will, the reason people don't like me online is, is for what I'm about to say, because they think I probably like myself too much, but like, I think I'm fucking awesome and I didn't always, and I might be wrong, <laughs> you know, but like, I'd ra I like this thing better. And like, with that, I just feel like I've been feeling so confident and happy and like interested. I'm more interested in other people. I like it. Despite really the fact like that it. I've been talking this entire podcast, but no, you know. but I really like it. It's I feel I definitely feel it. That's why I think you got to go to tysocards.com and pick up these monster collections. Pick up these collections. monster collections right here. This is, turns into an infomercial. Uh -huh. Nineteen ninety nine, three payments. Seven, seven, Seventeen dollars. Seventeen dollars. Yeah. We are taking your card and your calls right now. We're running short on the stock. I think that's important that you did that. That's good that you do that work. You want to make this a long episode because I don't want to end. Right what time now. is it now? We've been doing it for about an hour, I think. Well, I'm running on fumes. We can do it some more, though. Sounds like, do you know the Jackson Brown song, Running on Empty? Running on Empty. Is that running Jackson Brown? Running on, running by. Rick Rubin. Running Rubin. on with the sun. I'm Rick Rubin. Running by. All right, well, if we're going to be done soon, I want to stick around long enough where I could do this week's commercials here. But let's do this. Um, let, me, let, me, let me take what you gave me. I'm glad that you feel that way. It's a tough place to get to. I think many people that are listening will agree that that's really hard to do. And you know when you're like, ah, <clears throat> oh, people on this probably part of the reason people online hate me. That's not true. I think we're all desperately searching to find a little bit of peace in all the chaos. I don't care how rich, how poor, how where you're from. And I think as you get older, finding that is really, really hard. But once you start to lean towards that, I think it, the possibilities are endless for you to not just not just for you to be comfortable and happy, but also to um, not let the all of the shit keep pulling you back to mm -hmm. where you go, mm -hmm. wherever people go. Mm -hmm. So I think it's I, I honestly all comedy on this show aside, it is important. Our whole job is to make people feel good. Oftentimes we don't try to make ourselves feel good. Cry me a river, woe is me, smallest violin, yeah, that's, I get that, it. Hey, that's, if you're not doing that, that's on, you know, 
work you got some work to do just do that's what yeah but i think we were saying the same thing but do that do yeah that. make yourself feel good about yourself. yeah because your whole job is making other people feel good i want to acknowledge one thing too though it said people not liking me i was making a joke but my point was like when there's a there's a uh you could you could uh spin self-love into arrogance of and course. i'm saying that's what i was just saying like no i know this guy blah 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 so i was like making a they're joke they're gonna but, take it the way they're gonna take yeah, it but it's, not, um, but it's the way we need to give it to them um but i want to say because you said it's, it's hard to find that and i want to say what i already said but like it's really like a, a great i think this is great tangible advice find something and do it i mean it's almost as simple it, 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 if you you might already have that a lot of people do yeah but like if you don't or like you do but you haven't and i don't mean a passion and stuff you have to put 20 hours a week into no, but, but like it's something you really like it's so simple just find something you like and do it get better at it quicker at it or smarter at it yeah whatever it is it's the first week in Melbourne, I was like a little uneasy because I was like, this is going to be two and How a half. How long were you there? Two months? Two Over two months. And I was like, this is going to be daunting. And then I, I was like, well, I want to go get bands, uh, workout bands, because the oh, yeah. gym was bad and I was waiting on a gym membership. And I said, I'll go get bands. So I go to this store and I go get bands. And I'm in there. I'm like, sh- I'm like a kid in a, it was like the literally like, store. I was like, I, 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 could, I could buy anything I want. Do they have any REO speed wagons? Two of them. But one of them wasn't speedy. One of them was a re- REO regular rag- wagon. And next to the register was a dartboard. And I was like, I always love darts. I've always loved darts. And I'm good at darts. But I was like, I had a dartboard years ago. And I Real got dart, rid of Metal it. points or plastic? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Metal plastics for fucking jokers. Uh, the Joker actually has plastic. If you see the new Batman, he plays I darts the whole movie. exactly what you were talking about. Why so serious, dart? Um... And I put a dartboard up in the hotel, which I'll probably be paying for right now on my credit card. But I fucking put a dart, and I played. No way they're charging you for the dartboard. They're gonna, you, they're gonna thank you. They, th- they did. They wrote me a thank you email. But and I played every day, and I measured. I went and got blue tape, paint tape, and I measured off how many. How I did the what is, accurate. What is it? Twenty feet. Seven feet nine inches. I was way off. Yeah, not even close. And then it's six feet uh, right off the floor. You know, that's to the very, side of the dartboard. Those numbers are both. Uh, are both like. Uh, no, the only one of them. I was gonna say we're both like a couple points off of me, of being seven point nine and six, but I'm six four, and I'm probably seven point nine. Seven point nine inches. Yeah. A tall, short man. Yeah. If by tall you mean, do me a favor because we don't have to do it in post. Uh, on my podcast, we bleep and blur the mouth. Yeah. But I don't want to make you do that, so I'm gonna say some stuff, and will you just bleep it? Yeah. Ready. Um, but uh, for so my mouth is blurred. Could we make sure that we at least blur what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Put your hand over your mouth. Just bl- okay. Um, what what was I talking about? Oh yeah, you said tall. Um, yeah, tall. <clears throat> tall. Yeah. Yeah, tall. If Dude. and it's on my when Dude. you went bent over the back of the. Dude. Not even even considering how little and the volume can't even so my dick. Richard, look in that camera right there. One word or one phrase to end the episode, like we always do. Look in that camera and say something now. Find a passion and stick to it. Or my name ain't Bubblegum Shrimp. In here, we pour whisk, whisk. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger, I like gingers.